Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Zovel, a professor of chemistry at Saddleback College. You're about to watch one of my video lectures. If you like this lecture, you can get the entire Allied Health General Organic and Biochemistry course from the website address you see on the screen right now. Be sure to type the underscore between VOD and pages in this address. Enjoy the video. You saw a video earlier that started describing concentration, started describing the amount of solute in a solution. We learned two ways to describe this so far, either saturated or unsaturated. If I take um, some water and I scoop in some, say, sodium chloride, mix it, it'll start, it'll dissolve. I'll scoop in some more, it'll dissolve, I'll scoop in some, but at some point I'll have so much sodium chloride in there that I've reached its solubility limit, it can't dissolve anymore. So as I'm adding and it's dissolving, it's unsaturated. The moment I add some in and it no longer can dissolve, I could add more, but it won't dissolve. It'll just kind of sink to the bottom. We'll still have crystals in there. That's a saturated solution. We need to go into more details than that now. We need to know exactly how much solute is dissolved in the solution. If you're going to have an, a medication, a lot of times the medication come as solutions where you have a certain amount of the medication dissolved in a certain volume. So we want to talk about that using concentration. This is probably, if not the most important thing for your physiology, one of the top two things or three things for your physiology. When you get into physiology, week one, your physiology instructors are going to spend probably about 10 minutes talking about what we've talked about here <laughs> earlier in this chapter and what I'm going to talk about today. They'll go over that in about 10 or 15. They expect you to have it. That's why chemistry is a prerequisite for physiology. If you don't, you're going to just hit the wall that first week of physiology. And most of you guys are taking this class not because of your love of chemistry. Hopefully, you've developed a little bit of like for it. But you're taking it because it's a prerequisite for other courses. Okay? Th this is why. Because this is one of the reasons why, because of this section. When people hit the wall in physiology, it's because they don't understand this concentration and doing the types of calculations we're going to do in this. So make sure you master this. Yeah, you can probably pass the class, maybe get a C in this class and pass it without mastering this and some other concepts. But you'll pay later in, in physiology. You want to be spending all your time in physiology studying the new physiology, not going back and having to relearn this stuff. There's a worksheet that's going to really help you. At the very end of this chapter, I put a worksheet. It's online also that a good place for you guys to start practicing on it. On that worksheet, not only do I give you the answers, but I give you a complete solution to those problems so you could practice those, these concentration problems. Have I scared you sufficiently to pay attention to this lecture? No? Yeah. There's a whole bunch of concentration units. And I, I've asked the physiology teachers around here, which concentration units would you like me to teach in Chem 108? So they've told me those, and now we're going to go through and study the different concentration units that they've asked me to teach you guys, and also we're going to look at the type of problems we'll do. The first concentration unit that we're going to learn about is concentration by percent. What does percent mean? In general, not only in science, anywhere, in general, percent can be defined as the ratio of the part over the whole, that's just the ratio or the fraction, but then when you multiply it by 100, that gives you the percent. For instance, we could calculate, say, the percent uh, gentlemen in, in the room. So what we'd do is we'd count the number of guys in here, divide that, that's the part, divide that by the total number of students. That would give us the ratio of guys to students in the class, or the fraction of guys to students in the class, but we want the percent, we multiply that by 100. When you're talking about the concentration of a solution, we're going to talk about percent, sometimes by mass, sometimes by volume, and sometimes weight to volume. For percent mass, it's defined as the mass of the part over the total mass times 100. For example, if you've got some chocolate low-fat milk that said 1% milk fat, if that's 1% by mass, that means that in that milk, there's one gram of fat for every 100 grams of milk. Another term for percent is parts per 100. So for solutions, you could think of percent number of parts of solute for every 100 parts of solution, percent, or parts per 100. We 
use three different percent measurements for concentration of solutions. We could use percent weight to weight. That's what I had up there earlier called percent mass. We use percent volume to volume. This is often used when you dissolve one liquid in another liquid. Or we could use percent weight to volume. I'll talk about each of these. Here's the definition of percent weight to weight. The mass of solute over the mass of solution times 100. Here I put grams, but it doesn't matter what mass unit you use, as long as they're the same mass units, they'll cancel out, and your answer will have percent as the final unit. The definition of percent volume to volume is the volume of solute over the volume of solution. I have milliliters here, but it doesn't matter what volume unit you use, as long as you use the same one on top and the same one on the bottom here. You could do liters and liters, or quarts and quarts, or cups and cups, times 100. The third one is percent weight to volume. Sometimes um, folks call this the gram percent. In this one, the units matter. This is defined as grams of solute over milliliters of solution. So when you use this one, always remember to use grams of solute per milliliter of solution, then times 100. You'll need to know these three. I want to show you how to, how to calculate the concentration with these units of a solution. We're going to uh, make a solution of potassium iodide, sometimes used to treat iodine deficiencies. What's the percent weight to volume? Notice I had to say which one of the three to use, percent weight to volume, of a 75 milliliter solution containing 2.0 grams of potassium iodide. Before we do that calculation, I want to show you guys what it would be like really to, to see making this solution. How I do this in the lab is I would take a, a container and I would put it on, on the balance and I'd press the tear button on the balance and now the container is part of the balance and then I would use my spatula or scoopula and I would carefully weigh out, I'm watching the balance and I carefully add the potassium iodide until I get to reading the balance 2.0 grams. So now I have 2.0 grams of potassium iodide in there. And now I need to fill it up to the 75 milliliter mark. So I'd use some kind of graduated container that has the volume marked on it. I wouldn't use this one. There's much, in practice, I'd use a much more precise graduated uh, glassware. And then I'd, I'd fill it up, and I'd be watching the level, and I'd fill it up to the 75 milliliter mark. And then I'd stir it, I'd use a glass stir rod, or I'd put a magnetic stir bar in there and mix it until all the potassium iodide is dissolved. And so now I have a solution of potassium iodide. We want to figure out what the concentration of this solution is in units of percent weight to volume. To do that, I'm going to start with the definition of percent weight to volume. Remember, there's three different types of percents. So if someone tells you a solution is a certain percent, for you to really know what they're talking about, you have to say, is that percent weight to weight? Is that percent volume to volume? Is that percent mass to volume? And chances are, when you ask them that, they're going to look at you like you have three heads, right? because they probably don't know all the subtleties of, of this. Um, but it, you know, you, it matters, and you'll be right. You have to be careful when you do that. If it's your boss, do you want to do that gently? or? or anyone you're working with. It's not always best to be right. Is any, anyone married or have a significant other long term? Okay, you guys, we know, right? It's not always best to be right. There's a whole bunch of folks down at the Orange County Courthouse right now at the divorce court. They're absolutely right. <laughs> All right, back to the problem. So the point is, when someone says percent, there's three different ones. You better know which one they're talking about. Percent weight to volume in this question we're asked for. I get the definition of percent weight to volume, and now I'm given. I, to get this, I need the grams of solute. I'm given it, 2.0 grams of potassium iodide. I need the volume of solution in milliliters. I'm given it. So I put those numbers in there, and then I do, use my calculator to calculate the percent weight to volume. And I get 2.7%, and I put percent W slash V or spell out weight to volume. 
let's think about what that means. That means there's 2.7 grams of potassium iodide for every 100 milliliters of solution. Now that we know percent, which is the same as parts per 100, it's really easy to understand parts per thousand, parts per million, and parts per billion. I'll give you an example when you'd use this. You'd use these units for very dilute solutions. For example, this is a table sugar, and uh, this is the tip of a pencil, so just a tiny bit of table sugar. If I was to put that into a volume about the size of a swimming pool, I'd end up with a concentration of about one part per billion. Here's how we can calculate those. Recall that percent is the same as parts per hundred. So this is a percent weight to volume, for example. We have this ratio times 100. To do parts per thousand, we'd just do the same thing, but instead of multiplying by 100, you multiply by 1,000. That's parts per thousand. For parts per million, same ratio, but instead of multiplying by 100, you multiply by a million. It, when you do this on your calculator, your calculator will want you to put 1 times 10 to the 6th right there. And for parts per billion, you do the same thing, same ratio, but instead of multiplying by 100, multiply by a billion, 1 times 10 to the 9th. Let's do a problem using uh, these parts per billion. A lot of cities add sodium fluoride to their drinking water. They say to help reduce cavities. However, there's absolutely zero evidence that adding fluoride at those concentrations do anything at all to reduce cavities. Go figure. Those are our politicians for you. In fact, there's a lot of papers coming out now that are starting to indicate that, in fact, that fluorine may do damage to you. Be careful when you mix politicians and science. Sometimes you end up with bad things. It, you know, it's, when you go to the dentist and have your teeth clean, you know how they, they give you some fluoride? They'll either give you a liquid and you swish it around. And they, sw they say swish around for about a minute. Then do they say then swallow it? Then spit it out, right? You're getting very high co fluorine concentration. That has been proven to be effective in preventing cavities, not the stuff in the drinking water. All right, but I diverge. Let's go back to the problem. If 25 liters of city water contains... 0.18 grams of sodium fluoride. What's the concentration in parts per billion? Weight to volume. So let's do the calculation. Here's our definition of parts per billion. Grams of solute over note, milliliters of solution. So I have to convert liters to milliliters. Times 10 to the 9th. So I'll put those numbers in. So parts per billion. And notice you have to say weight to volume. 0.018 grams of sodium fluoride, 25,000 milliliters of solution, that's 25 liters, times, on your calculator, do times 1 times 10 to the 9th, and you'll get the answer. When you do that, you should get this number, 720 parts per billion weight to volume. Obviously, this fine-looking animal has not been drinking enough city water. Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Zobel. If you like this video and you like to get the entire course or just some of the chapters on video, I have the entire course and video lectures at the website you see on the screen right now. They're available on demand. The period of the rental is for a full year, so you'll have this video through the entire course. You could watch it as many times as you want, whenever you want. Happy studies.